What's up, gamers? What's up, gamers? What's up, gamers? It's your boy, MM2K of PNTS Network and Hard Knock Digital Culture, back again with another episode of The Capsule. This is where we take the week's biggest topic in gaming news. We put a little snippet video behind it, give you our thoughts. Um, and today's video is titled The Problem with Starfield at 30 frames per second, a concern for gamers. But before we get into this one, do us a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when we're dropping these doses. We appreciate all of y'all straight up. All right, let's get right into it. So I want to welcome you to this video where we deep dive into the big debate surrounding the recent Xbox showcase on June 11th, 2023. And one of the most controversial topics discussed is the decision to cap the highly anticipated game Starfield at 30 frames per second, all right, on consoles. Now, while some argue that this is not a big deal, today we're going to explore why this decision is problematic and its implications for gamers. And in order to do that, we're going to break this up into several parts. So the first part is part one, the concern over Starfield's 30 frames per second cap. Now, the decision to limit Starfield to 30 frames per second has sparked a heated debate within the gaming community. And some argue that frames per second doesn't matter. As long as the game looks cool, has a wide enough scope, etc. But this viewpoint misses the bigger concern. 60 frames per second has become the gold standard for a smooth and immersive gaming experience. Now, they believe that capping Starfield at 30 frames per second on consoles undermines the potential of the game and fails to meet the expectations set by the Xbox ecosystem. And when I say they, I'm talking about gamers, right? Now, consumers who paid a premium price for the Xbox console were promised 60 frames per second gameplay consistently. Not only from Xbox were they given this problem, promise, but this information was cascaded um, from creators whom Xbox has supported. That makes it even a bigger problem. Part two, the self-centered view of ignoring the issue. Now, those who dismiss the concerns surrounding Starfield's frame rate as insignificant are overlooking the fact that consumers making purchasing decisions based on false premises, dismissing concerns and, do and doing so to satisfy your own personal likes fails to address the core issue. Gamers who have invested in the Xbox console were promised the world's most powerful system, capable of delivering 60 frames per second, right? And by capping that at 30 frames per second, Xbox and Bethesda are not delivering on that promise, leading to justified disappointment and frustration. This discrepancy between the expectations with buzzwords like frame deltas, velocity architecture, uh, architecture, etc., versus reality has left many feeling deceived. Part three, separating technical expectations from frustrated gamers. Now, while it's important to understand the technical reasons behind Starfield's 30 frames per second cap, it's equally important not to direct frustrations towards those who provide these explanations. Websites and, and, and publications like Digital Foundry play a vital role in helping gamers understand the underlying reasons for certain design choices. Discouraging cause seekers only hinders our ability to learn and make informed decisions in the future. Instead, we should encourage their insights and use them to navigate future purchasing decisions more wisely. Tech focus outlets play a vital role in helping consumers understand the reasons behind such choices. They and developers in particular were sounding the alarm bells to a lot of the claims. Maybe now after this, we'll be less inclined to hang off the words of popular personalities who have an agenda. Rather, we will pay attention to the warnings from the unbiased tech experts. Part four. Personal reflections caught in the complexity. Now, let me be honest and frank here. As someone caught up in the complexity of dealing with Starfield's cap being capped at 30 frames per second on console, I share the frustration of many gamers, even without an Xbox console. Let me explain how. I was highly impressed by Starfield Showcase, 
But as someone who frequently games on PC-based experiences, I found myself torn between investing in a costly upgrade or settling for a suboptimal experience on the Xbox console. And honestly, the economics would have won out if the experience wasn't so suboptimal. I would have preferred to simply buy an Xbox. However, the lack of 60 frames per second severely limits my options. The disappointment lies not only in the, in the design choice, but also in the physical aspects. Personally, I suffer from headaches when switching from 30 to 60 frames per second, making this 30 frames per second cap a significant drawback. Had Starfield been exclusive to PlayStation, right? And we've talked about this before. Had it been exclusive to, exclusive to PlayStation as rumored, I can guarantee you the approach towards optimizing the game would have been totally different. We know Sony and PlayStation would have said, nah, 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 Todd, chill out. We'll find a way to keep all the fidelity that you want in a 30 frames per second mode, but we gotta have a 60 frames per second mode. We're sending out our text. And with that said, that leads us to part five, the conclusion. Promoting meaningful discussions in gaming integrity. Look, in conclusion, the 30 uh, frames versus 60 frames debate is valid and should not be dismissed. It goes beyond personal preferences and brand loyalty. The issue lies in the overpromising of the Xbox console's capabilities, which has resulted in consumers feeling deceived and making poor decisions, purchase wise. This stems from the overpromising of the Xbox console by Xbox themselves, creators and pundits. Gamers supported the purchase of Bethesda hoping for the best experience possible. The disappointment surrounding Redfall and it being in, and now a capped Starfield highlights the need for transparent discussions that prioritize gaming integrity over brand loyalty and clickbait agenda. Gaming is about always pressing for the best experiences for gamers and holding companies accountable for their promises. So look guys and gals, let's return to a time when gaming focused on genuine concerns rather than those clickbait agendas. By engaging in a meaningful conversation and holding companies accountable, we can strive to return to a gaming industry that values consumer trust and delivers on promises made. It's time to reevaluate our approach to framing discussions around gaming concerns and ensure that gamers' expectations are respected and met. I want to thank you for watching this. And I hope that you again will, if, if you haven't looked at it that way, try to reframe your approach to having such discussions and concerns surrounding Starfield's 30 frames per second cap. Remember to stay informed voice your opinions and push for transparency in the gaming industry. I know this may sound cheesy, but there's no other way to say it, but to say it together, we can make a difference. And that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Cause like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Those links will lead you to the broadband bullies, PNTS network, hard knock digital culture, which is here and cloud dosage. With all that said, peace, have a wonderful gaming day.